Hi, welcome everybody to this webinar, another se session of webinar. And this is about uh, an unusual way of discussing achieving significance in an organization. And um, yes, this is for mid-career professionals and uh, professionals who are feeling stuck. And also they are uh, feeling unfulfilled. So when uh, that happens, uh, like say the, the, of course, promotion, salary increment, recognition and everything is there, which makes the sense. But even if, like say, I can say 95% of people are good at their uh, job, they are doing good at their job, they are doing excellently, irrespective of the pandemic. And some of them, of course, have lost their job, but they're trying something, trying out something because they are brilliant. And if you, if you take notice of why some people have lost jobs, and many of them, and many few have been in, in the similar level, have been retained, then you can see that these people have been somehow they have distinguished themselves they have achieved recognition somehow and what are those for uh, uh, let us let us discuss that also today's webinar i'm sangeeta and i'm a leadership growth mentor and i have seen so many mid-career professionals who are doing great who after doing say five to 12 years of very, very successful career growth, they are feeling stuck. They, many of them during the COVID time, pandemic time, they have lost their job. Even people from very premier institutions like say IIT, IIM, they even have lost their jobs. And why so? So this webinar deals with the um, deals with the um, significance that one achieves and that will be in an unusual definitely it is not the regular way of educational qualification skills experience all those there has to be something very very distinctive about those people who are still retained and who are thought to be indispensable resource to their organization. So what is that? How to achieve that? So this, uh, this is about the webinar and how people can get there. How I started this uh, topic is very, very interesting because all my career, whenever I um, uh, traveled in buses, trains, metros, even after coming to Delhi. Here also I saw people complaining, grieving about, about their workplaces and <clears throat> they waste so much of energy. And when I came to Delhi, I came after a very, very successful, almost four successful huge mega projects in which I have trained myself 18,000 people. So, and those people, they have gone themselves to achieve uh, prominence in their organization, in, in the same organization or elsewhere. In very remote areas also, I managed to train people who, who are now taking charge of that area, even if I'm not there. So let us see, uh, let us uh, share, share my screen about uh, about what are the four secrets that you will be you will be learning about in this next 90 minutes. It is about knowing your strength area. Everybody, everybody does the same thing. Everybody knows that uh, there is a strength area which is very unique to 
everybody in uh, in in their own according to their own personality type and um, yet yet people keep competing with others and lose track of these particular skill set that they have they enjoy and which is their unique selling proposition so those uh, so those are what we we will look at how to find our own strength area and build on those strength area how to do that with uh, adversity intelligence and also emotional intelligence while we grow with those kind of capability how we make ourselves resources assets to the organizations and how we become dependable during emergencies when we um, cater to the need of the organization and the fourth one is even after becoming so much of successful even then people <clears throat> if they don't diversify themselves their portfolios and their expertise whatever they have gained so far they have this uh, tendency to lose job now job is not everything where happiness is there maybe it is not the entire thing that why you are born here for so let us see let us see how we can manage this four skills who i am i am a i am a leadership growth mentor all my all my life uh, i have uh, all not all my life all my career which is of 10 plus years of experience during which it so happened that i i have managed with resources constraint and i have built resources and resource made myself resourceful and then i i followed an unusual path so how to how to um, how i Uh, recognized or uh, say discovered talent in people that has been my forte and uh, with that with those 18000 professionals i have impacted 1 crore lives since 2008 why i am doing this so people who are people who are uh, are you able to see this why i am doing this is people who are very very potentially very very strong people have huge skill sets they are wasting time in thinking negative about uh, their workplaces their colleagues their lives and uh, of course situation circumstances will not be very good for entire 100% of our lives something will be very very negative mm, even at workplace uh, competition will come somebody else will be recognized better than uh, you mm, at times because of uh, because of the requirement of the organizations and then competition cro crops up and it it leads one negative uh, thought pattern leads to another and this goes on multiplying like say it it goes on to several levels of people who once they start with one negative thought pattern about a boss a colleague something happening in the uh, according to the organizational policy they will go on thinking about that and they will post um, their negative mindset will go on and on and on so these people are losing their potential right these people are losing their potential they waste precious time when they could have done better something better they could have done the next right step they have taken the next right step and could have done this better when i was i was i started my career i i was doing great i was known for very very great thing. some great uh, projects were happening i was contributing brilliantly and 
but something was missing in me i was uh, because i was doing something i was very proactive at times i was getting into conflict with my team members and my seniors so i was thinking that uh, i i was doing more than my level uh, was looking for so i was doing more i was contributing more so i should have been appreciated more. so that was that was a, a an expectation from me uh, and how it has come because all my life it it goes on to my childhood experiences my the the experiences in my life which craved for recognition right and uh, that has manifested at workplace with struggle and conflict with other people it was not like that i was asking and i was very very polite with somebody now whenever it it, it uh, required to demand somewhere i demanded and it it uh, went on to have severe conflicts so despite not doing uh, much many of my teammates they were given promotions they were given salary salary increments and i was not able to know why so happens despite doing everything so ultimately what i did i was uh, i just uh, did what was uh, expected of me the minimum the bare minimum what was expected of me the routine work that was expected of me and i was not being proactive at all so it it uh, the situation uh, worsened and it didn't help me either so what and and the projects were huge the projects were huge i was contributing like say hugely and i was able to achieve results but i was not able to take the team with along with me these results which are huge by themselves i already i have impacted one crore people i could have impacted five crore people with this team if i have taken this team together that i realized much after so when actually we will go and see when uh, when i realized this then i knew if i want to achieve my dream of spreading this success of impacting life of people in in a huge manner then i have to train people more people have to be there along with me to have a bigger impact and i could do solution comes to me um, that is my superpower and it comes to me many of the people the mid career professionals actually they are trained to have this experiences and have this expertise this brilliance to create similar kind of magics but like me they were into some kind of uh, trouble or friction with the team which is why they are not able to do so so let us uh, come to this uh, this the presentation industry data says it is company policy supervision relationship with boss work condition salary relationship with peers these are the various conditions because of which the people people are dissatisfied and they feel stuck and if we um, consider about this next uh, slide which which talks about company policy the same policy which is good for a for a set of people it is bad for another set of people so these um, what what makes the same company policy bad for some other people because we are not mapping those people's expertise properly into into um, our our work area which is why they are feeling uh, left out so that that was cause, causing this uh, say dissatisfaction and incompetent people sometimes they get powerful that is what 86% people agree that uh, 
we have a leadership crisis and those uh, people who are not of leadership material who do not empower who who is a leader people who are leaders who empower and uh, make be, make more of the workforce who utilize the utilize the expertise of others who leverage other strength those are the leaders right but those leaders are not there in the leadership role right some some other incompetent people are getting into those and there is closed mindset of uh, uh, many leadership which is why they are not open to uh, innovation and ideas which will take advantage of the innovativeness and the skill and uh, the risk taking ability of juniors so what happens when such such leaders are there who who continue to be there so these people, even em employees they wait for 3 to 5 uh, five years and before leaving but ultimately they leave and what is there everybody thinks a good career is a promotion salary increase better role but yes apart from all this there is a clear vision of the future also people should be able to see their future in the company right so that is uh, not there and what is the goal many many people because they are not able to see the clear picture they are not able to um, define uh, they are not able to see their goal uh, to be to become real or, um, in terms of growth in this organization so they become the and this is the very good organization that they have come to and they will not get even better organization at other place also the same condition will happen so what the this people do now it is not to blame the other person about what is happening here what is happening otherwise so um, when when uh, these people there is a friction between the management the senior super boss and uh, this work force of mid career professionals they feel not up to the mark there is workplace politics there is inability to find new opportunities so what happens they, they might change jobs they might change cities they might change profiles but the pattern persists the same case happened to me and the pattern of negativity mindset is also there and it doesn't go easily once it is there so definitely people people would need some kind of breakthrough here some kind of um light here how to deal with such kind of situation change was from conflict to comprehension if you if you are uh, in conflict if you are asking for the other party to explain why the situation is so then the other person the other party is not going to be able to explain it um, for your purpose he can explain according to his or her own choice but for your purpose you need to comprehend why the situation is so it might be a requirement for for the organization why this uh, is so so let us start thinking it from thinking seeing looking at it from another perspective components of our existence self uniqueness how you assess yourself people credibility how others assess you and dream depth what impression you make so these are the th three dimensions of existence that we have and what we know is what we think about ourselves we do not even think about our uniqueness at all we think about our own uh, whatever we have and we we think that this whatever we deserve it has to come to us on its own it cannot right and we are in dependence with people because we are working in a team and if we are working in a team to earn the trust of the team members we need to establish our credibility right and how do we establish our credibility because we are people we are leaders and we are those people 
who come in handy when there is a crisis right so this uh, this 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 is our existence how we exist right and then let me go to the next and if when we are in that critical critical situation of in in conflict with the organization in the management and we also <clears throat> are not able to come out from our own negative mindset then the one thing that we can do is we start looking inwards whether we are doing something wrong from our side that is what we should start thinking this gives a clue because it will give you uh, the 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 part that you are playing in the in the negativity of these circumstances because negativity cannot happen if you are also you are positive it cannot happen if both the sides even one side is positive so start looking inwards that is one um, one skill that one can do then difficulties because of your skills your expertise your brilliance you can find out those areas of difficulties that the other person is facing and you can help that person to be through from that negative situations or difficult situation that will help you to have his to have his trust and his dependence on you and he will be a friend to you rather than the negative situation that earlier was happening and open to criticism and if somebody is criticizing you then be open because there will be another person who is looking at the situation in from another perspective and he might have an insight which you are not able to see so if that is so then it will be another learning that will happen so here let me um, let me show you from that difficult position in uh, some some time before 2008 how i could manage to achieve these four uh, projects it so happened that i just started thinking in another from another perspective that whether there is this is the small step i started uh, taking that maybe there is something wrong that i am doing something negative i am doing what are my strength so my strength was unknown territory i am good at Uh, good at dealing in unknown territory, uh, implementing projects, unexpected challenges. I am not afraid of, and experience of self-help groups with village women. Actually, I have I had worked. So when this opportunity of educate, like say, enumerating forty-four lakh women for this account opening uh, project in Rajasthan in Bhavasa in two thousand eight. when it came 44 lakh women which is 4.4 million uh, women to be done in two months time in just 60 days then there was a requirement of 12000 professionals to be uh, there and in our own company those people were not there so we had to source people from other organizations these volunteers came from everywhere from other organizations local professionals everybody so uh, to, to we, there is there was a requirement of training so because training happened came to me naturally and it was a discovery for me because i started focusing on solutions that is how i could make myself useful at this place when there is a challenge this is a big crisis that was there so i could actually train these 12000 professionals i could uh, uh, educate them how to take photographs how to make uh, sets of this uh, filled up forms along with these photographs and also uh, catalog them into separate files so we could uh, achieve this 44 lakh um, enumeration in two months time so that was a huge um, huge uh, achievement which which it, it happened without any 
any planning prior uh, preparation it was just because a solution that i had in mind that we will be able to do this so here is my contribution to the team it just happened by chance just because i had a mindset to contribute i had a mindset of no expectation from other people whether they are whether they are recognizing my contribution or not it was just that this was a huge project it was a huge opportunity to impact life in a positive manner so i did this and later on on hindsight these were my uh, my strength which i could discover which was not earlier there when i was thinking negative so what were this uh, thing if you if you look at these qualities that i discovered about myself you can discover about yourself there are so many whenever you are achieving something in a team which is a huge thing then you can see that you have done actually something spectacular and that will inspire you to take bigger projects and then you will forget about the day to day uh, craving that is happening with your boss what is uh, the craving with your boss what is the conflict with your boss with your small team when you achieve 44 lakh women's life if you have done something you have impacted so many lives what you will be known for for that achievement rather than this craving so once you set your mind to that positive mindset it is just a change of perception that i small change of perception that i did in my mindset which led to such a huge achievement and it happened it happened accidentally and it was not expected it this project happened to me just because i set a small mindset change and the second thing just immediately after that i got another project in a very difficult terrain in meghalaya which is a very hilly on uh, even terrain and uh, uh, people people are not very open to welcome strangers but i worked there for 2 years and um, i implemented a project called national e governance wherein i had to train 1500 professional it was similar in nature much smaller in scale but even then indirectly i could impact 29 lakh lives and what innovative thing i did was uh, because of this uneven terrain there was uh, no broadband connection happening and there was a very Uh, very much requirement of this data connectivity out there otherwise the central server at shillong in the capital city of meghalaya couldn't have been connected to the remote areas of meghalaya so this was um, here everybody was thinking as to what we should be doing that time so i proposed data card because that was what i was using so i proposed why not give data cards to everybody rather than having this broadband connection and even data cards were very small because the the signal was not getting caught so we proposed we sat so we from our company i proposed we should test with five visits visits were very very expensive at that time but when visits were successful then the government of meghalaya they have uh, they donated 42 visits so all the all the 239 kiosks that i had set up with 1500 professionals they were all connected so again i am not a very technical person i i don't know um, anything about <laughs> data connectivity and other things it was just because just i um because of a positive mindset i tried for a solution what to be done if there is a problem there has to be a solution and it it came to me accidentally again another time because i wanted a solution not to creep on the negativity all the time there was problem there was difficulty but i decided to uh, find out a solution and today that time when i started establishing this kiosk 
I, I was not getting anybody to be sitting in that kiosk. So I had to visit every household and find out whoever was the 10th or 12th pass student. I had to train that person. Today, those kiosks are in high demand. Every kiosk requires three to four lakh donation before they can be assigned to that person. So this, this, uh, this, was, a, this was a photograph taken by me <laughs> uh, with my parents when they visited Meghalaya when I was there. And this, this is again, because on hindsight, what are the new um, contribution that I did? So I had, I had listed down what positive thing that I, my, I was thinking. And this was um, around my mindset. There were several in whoever I had trained, those people also, their strength also I had outlined. And it was a huge database of capabilities. So Meghalaya being a very backward state, Nobody thought of any capability, any skill it could have been harnessed out there. We could find a huge database where these people were enlisted and further they have been taken to the Meghalaya government jobs afterwards. The third story was, uh, of course, I was not in field. I was in office, but it, this was a very, very strong um, Think that a strong contrib contribution which I made because every day the recovery data, it was something around microfinance where um, small loans were given to people. And if you give, say, 500 crores of um, loans, if each loan is, say, 10,000 rupees, then it becomes a huge volume of money that has been circulated amongst poor people of India. Now, suddenly there was a uh, ordinance. Uh, somebody thought in government thought that this money was being siphoned off by influential people. So they brought a, an ordinance and suddenly all the circulation was stopped. So whoever company had put money into this and it is a livelihood business, people's livelihood were at stake. And when this was happened, before you explain to anybody, um, any government, government in any case, they, they are not in a position to understand anything at emergency. So first of all, you need to suffer these setbacks. So <clears throat> every day I collected this data from whoever I could, whoever was in field, and I was plotting a graph in which I was showing everybody that this, uh, this is the state of affair happening. Just, just 10 days before of this uh, ordinance, I had analyzed the entire data that we were capturing to show our management that all the three indicators were indicating they're in red. So we are at risk, huge risk. And anytime this will burst, and the company will have a severe debacle. So it was, it was, you can say it was <clears throat> something kind of a prediction and it came true. In any case, this was a negative uh, circumstances in the company, but again, we, everybody came together, they, they collected data, and they analyzed this data. And as a result, our chairman could take this data, went to the RBI, the Central Bank of India, and spoke to them about what can be done. So the loan restructuring was done. The entire portfolio was paid in a longer tenure than it was supposed to be. And, and the, the of course, the company, never recovered easily. It took uh, the company uh, almost 10 years. It happened in 2010 and the company almost took another 10 years in 2020. 
it started recovering when COVID again happens. So, of course, it is going slow. But in any case, there was a team which was trained to take this data and analyze this data and approach to the government, showing them what happens when a uh, when an ordinance like this is brought up, 500 crores of uh, crore of volumes, 500 crores were in <clears throat> given in each state, and this was in 16 states. So every state had uh, 40 crores to 500 crores of portfolio, which all went down down the drain, but. The positive thing that had happened was people were trained to face another such debacle. In, in microfinance situation in India, every two years there is some, uh, some or other kind of problem that, that is happening. The latest being the demonetization that has happened when the um, thousand rupee, 500 rupees was taken out of circulation. And it was so sudden that uh, the, the economy suffered and the economy is still suffering because of that. And afterwards, this COVID again happened. And there is there are many disasters also is happening. So India's economy is in bad shape because of that. Then fourth story. I changed my profile um, and uh, I now came completely to the livelihood space where um, I, I uh, turned a food scars pocket into a food sufficient pocket. So this was something, I, I'm not an agriculture person, but I proposed agriculture based livelihood uh, there because this area was a fringe villages of a tiger reserve. People were completely dependent on the forest for their livelihoods. So what do you propose to these people who are illiterate? Only agriculture substitute was possible. So I started with the system of root intensification. That is how I started teaching them. I got various trainers from the agriculture department to do that. Then the second thing was integrated farming, wherein we... Um, tried various crops, uh, the subsistence crops as well as cash crops were together. Then we uh, did mustard, hybrid mustard uh, cultivation wherein we broke the record of Madhya Pradesh uh, in mustard cultivation, mustard production. Then uh, the fourth was uh, the, the cultivation of horbals, high value horbals. So uh, this uh, this livelihood it, it was it was a food scarce pocket and suddenly it became so so sustainable so prosperous that it, it was a transformation kind and this was the fourth um, project in continuation it took me just four years and there was a community level organization of five hundred illiterate ladies who could manage a corpus of 36,000. That also was possible because as a leader, I gave them the, the, the uh, autonomy, how to run that uh, corpus themselves. So I could only advise them. I advised them only. The rest of the things like deciding on where to invest, how much to invest, how to recover that money, where to find markets. All these were done by these ladies, supported by me. They were capacitated. And everybody, every lady had a unique skill. Some, somebody was uh, good at skill, uh, seed treatment. Somebody was doing uh, something else, like say root treatment. Somebody else was doing uh, this nursery. So like this, everybody has a small, small skills and everybody was dependent on each other. That is how they could contribute to the betterment of everybody and the, the entire uh, uh, area went on a transformation. So then, again, because there, this, this was a very remote area, 
I didn't have the university graduates to accompany me to execute that project. I had only the villagers along with me to execute that project where I executed this livelihood finance. Microfinance was something where once you give loan, then you don't give another loan till it is recovered. But here in livelihood finance, Till the livelihood is established, you keep on giving small, small loans. Because suppose somebody buys a cow for his or her livelihood. Now the cow needs to eat. So this fellow, after buying a cow, taking a small loan, he needs to have some more money to, to feed the cow, right? Till the cow gives birth. So... And then this person, when the cow gives birth, then there is milk and this for, to, to sell this milk, this person requires a two-wheeler, small bike or something. So for that also he needs a loan. So it will take a longer period for him to entirely pay back the money. But during that, his livelihood gets established. And from poverty, he suddenly jumps off to non-poverty. This loan will be just once. His, uh, his investment in the two-wheeler will, will be just once because he has bought a cow. He will again, of course, buy a cow, but that will not be from loan money. It will be from his own capital that he has formed. So this is how the uh, cycle of poverty is escaped. Now, this, this is where, why I call this as, a, as something, why this project has changed my life is this community has won, had won 17 awards. And here, uh, the then chief minister was Narendra Modi, who is the prime minister now. So the chief minister uh, recognized my farmers there in 2014. And, uh, this is a story of the mustard hybrid breaking records of Madhya Pradesh. My minimum was 12 quintal per acre, maximum was 24 quintal. So before that, Madhya Pradesh had only six to seven quintal of production per hectare. So it was like a multiple time. And one of the ladies, she got this ideal lady award from the then industry minister and she, she got a cash award of uh, 1.5 lakhs also. Then MS Swaminathan Research Award also another farmer got. So these, these are amongst the most prominent seven, most prominent awards out of those seven they, that the community received. A recognition for me as well, uh, because I had uh, this best social enterprise established out there and uh, subsistence to sustainability story was there. This is Vijay Mahajan, the chairman of uh, that company who is uh, felicitating me along with the chairman, another co-chairman of that company that time. And here is a, uh, an eloquent <laughs> uh, written email from Vijay Mahajan, the chairman, which uh, says that you are an amazing person. Your ability to come up with relevant innovations needed at the base of the pyramid is wonderful. But the world is full of this smart idea, Wallace. What distinguishes you is that you find resources and platforms to try out the ideas, to pilot test them, improve them, and hopefully scale those up. So the day I received this email, I felt like winning Nobel Prize because this was a very, very rare kind of distinction for me. And all it started with just a setting up a positive intention at my end. Then I was picked up for um, a magazine called Mint Munch amongst 33 ladies of uh, uh, distinction. I was one of them. This is with Professor Mama Devinus, who is a Nobel laureate. And this is for social enterprise. I had a discussion with him. Unless we um, have more social enterprises, 
we will not be able to deal with climate change so that is uh, entirely a different kind of th um, <laughs> subject that i now deal with how climate change from livelihood to climate change so every livelihood activity gives some carbon footprint and we cannot avoid development and the more development activity we undertake the more carbon generation it will have and the global warming because of the greenhouse effect it will have so how to deal with that unless we have social enterprise where we don't have to multiply the machines we have to multiply the efforts so how do we do that the the discussion was on that so there are two important points of two to stalwarts mr vijay mahajan here he talks about uh micro capital and mr mohammad yunus he talks about social enterprise so every enterprise requires a micro capital so if we are doing micro finance small loans then micro capital is essential capital is that part which will form some net worth of an individual which is not there even if somebody takes a loan and he repays he or she repays it off there is no net worth being generated unless there is enterprise to that person's name so how do we generate that this person cannot own a, an enterprise a capital intensive enterprise this person can have a social enterprise which is very very central to india kind of um, economy as well as culture then uh, these uh, were the topics and this is one of my interns who um, who was working on this uh, affordable housing again because coastal orissa is prone to disaster cyclones too many cyclones in two years people have have their uh, they they have <clears throat> they don't have houses to live since 2019 and uh, we uh, were we were working for uh, those people uh, speaking to government speaking to all financial institutions speaking to microfinance institutions and uh, somebody doesn't have a product somebody doesn't have money somebody doesn't have the total demand and how to distribute this money also is a problem so um, we are solving problems at each stakeholders point and bringing them together to collaborate and contribute to each other and they they, they cannot just tell us tell me <laughs> in the central point to solve their problems it has to be brought everybody needs to be brought into a central position where they can discuss among themselves and find a solution so in i am in the process so if i do that then this affordable housing is for economically weaker section of the society so at least 37% of india's population is weaker section and um, if you take 135 37% of this um, 135 is uh, whatever like say about 50 crores or so i will be able to benefit with this uh, effort of mine so now where is the time for me to creep about boss and my teams and something not happening i am i am reaching out to many stakeholders at organizational level at national level and even international level to bring out bring in resources to solve social problems so no more all those things so this this is something anybody can do so this is about me and right now this um, this online ad <laughs> venture i have started because physically it will be very small number of people that i can impact if i do it on my own alone i need a huge number of people to do the same similar thing at their level wherever they are so that we can make a great impact what i have heard since uh, long is saying that se since 70 years india's uh, development has not ha has happened because of this 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 reason but 
I took only four years to transfer my area. So if I can do it, anybody can do it because I have the same resources as anybody else. Only the mindset that I have requires to be developed in, develop in other people also. Then the potential becomes higher and anybody can do this. And we can, not only in India, the global crisis can be dealt with with this. So let us, let us go, let us start. How to bring our journey from uh, this is smallest, um, from the office where we are craving today. We are negative about these, that our promotion, our salary to that global vision. Lead right from where you are. So how do you start? Don't wait to start. Till that happens, till this happens, you, you cannot wait. That, that day will not come unless you start doing, unless you start somewhere. In my case, it was a positive intention and I must have done something wherein I was recognized that I have this mindset to execute these projects. That is how these projects were given to me. Otherwise, there were thousands of employees in the company uh, how I was singled out, you know. So when you change your mindset, your, your entire vibe changes. So lead from wherever you are. And if people are saying something negative, then it is a reflection of their own negativity. So don't bother about that. It is not about you. Start the journey and it doesn't happen. Any, no success happens in one day. So it takes time. So allow yourself that time. Genuinely, honestly, be engaged, be involved in that, whatever you are trying to do. And the journey is not one time. Just one time you do and then forget. Forget. It will not be that. Once you start means it has to go on. Because it takes time. And when you start on a particular journey, the problem doesn't end at one place. It just only resolves one aspect of a problem. The other aspects are there because people are different. This is circumstances will be different. There will be many other four, four years back. Nobody would have thought of Corona and pandemic, right? So these are certain, certain, certain emergencies and these emergency challenges will keep on coming. So problem or challenges doesn't end. So you have to keep on evolving. True ignorance is not the absence of knowledge, but the refusal to acquire it. So you keep yourself in, uh, knowledgeable all the time because it is, it is everywhere there is YouTube is there. And today's internet age, knowledge is not a problem. Anybody, whoever wants, can take knowledge. It is not anymore the library where you have to go access a library and other things. Just you have an internet um, connection, your mobile also, you can access knowledge. Get good at thinking of others. If you are thinking about to, good about yourself only, it will not help. Think about good of others also. Everybody has some kind of strength. And why you are uh, getting involved with that person, why that person has come to your life, because there is a scope that that person's strength you can leverage and do greater good. Whatever you are doing good, even greater good will be possible if you can leverage and run towards it. Feel, act, think, and this goes on. If you are doing a job only, if I would have thought that I was doing a job, then these achievements wouldn't have been possible. So whoever is doing, being in a job, also is executing something great, then that person is doing these three things, feeling, thinking, and acting. This is system one, before and after. This is fast, slow, 
I, um, individually, what we tend to do is we take fast actions and uh, we don't engage anybody. We, we do something which is, which is just like that. And it is automatic, everyday decisions, error prone, whatever is fast without thinking, without planning, then it will be error prone. So from that we transition to be slow, conscious, effortful, thinking about everybody. It is complex decisions also, and we become reliable. Here is what happens when there is knowledge, experience, and creativity. How it happens? The same knowledge. If you add experience, then it becomes creativity. So how everybody's creativity is different. Everybody is in a very different kind of situation. And if you have the eyes, you can see their creativity also. And if you have still greater wisdom, you can leverage that creativity for your advantage also. Why your advantage? You can have the credit to see the good in another person. That is a great advantage and it, it will end up in having good for everybody, public good. When life seems hard, try changing perspectives. Can you see the change in perspective this person is doing? This is a hard, uh, stiff, rise that he is facing he just tilted the entire thing and he is having a nice uh, walk right if there is no door build a door so what do you prefer great decision making process with poor outcomes or poor decision making process with good outcomes which one you will prefer this is i am talking about your mindset which one you prefer will, will tell a thousand thing about you. And if you know, then a good decision making process is a process. It might have some poor outcome right now, but going forward, it will ultimately res uh, result in good outcomes. So for sometimes it will, it, it will not be like that. So be patient about that. Then simple self-questioning. This is a mindset thing. Do you agree how motivated you are? It is, it is difficult for me to take decisions quickly. How do you assess yourself? So these are the questions. I feel like I could have done better by improving my time management. As a result of the mistakes I made, I feel unconfident and start to doubt in my skills and abilities. It is important for me to achieve a better mutual understanding in my current and further relationships. Think these are, these questions are part of your um, personality and uh, anything, this will, um, the, the, answer that you are having for yourself. Just write those down. This says something about you. And if you need to change somewhere, then please uh, make that change. Because, uh, uh, <clears throat> you know, it is, uh, the, the change is according to your personality. It is not about the other people's personality, right? So whatever suits you, you can just work on that. Nothing good or bad. So here are a few case studies, let us see. So if there is a bad boss, suppose, what he is doing to your career, he is giving some bad directions, he is giving some bad decisions, he is not supporting. These are the three things he does. Now, what you can do is how you respect, just you find out his strength areas and uh, whatever experiences he has got, whatever strength point he has got, appreciate that. You can support, then uh, do uh, mentoring by updating him. 
teach the boss teach some new skills because very likely that this uh, your boss is outdated on uh, computer skills that you can uh, teach some decision making that he is doing bad you can help him take better decisions or teach him because his skills have been outdated anyways any boss who whoever is in a leading position he needs to be very obsessed so don't complain about his obsession now case study 3 here is a boss vinod he he was very happy because he had been approached by everybody in the organization so, so much so that he was not able to take care of his own curriculum so he hired somebody called rajis now rajis has started taking care of his disturbances and he got time for his own work but now since more people are not reaching out to him so he felt uh, insecure what is ailing the box what do you think can you be proactive to resolve the misunderstanding if you are in rajesh position how do you re react if you are in vinod's position how do you react so just write down outline your your ideas here is another uh, situation where the vp wants julie the vice president wants julie one of the junior employees to be promoted two levels up now julie's uh, supervisor is george he uh, understand that julie is an extraordinary worker but she is not a good leader at times because he she doesn't enjoy the support of his uh, her team members now he spoke to sophie the hr executive now the hr executive came to julie and she asked i know you are a high performer do you do your colleagues accept you as a leader so that uh, that uh, set julie thinking if you are in julie's position in each of the position if you are in george's position how do you react if you are in hr executive position how do you react so these are the positions where how would you react matters because this is how ultimately the team will be affected another story is marco marco is a subject matter expert and his boss one day uh, called him saying that you should be a specialist by now now he was wondering what is uh, what is this is, does he mean a promotion what does he mean is it a higher responsibility or is it going uh, to be his sidelining so how how would you think if you were in marco's position so these are the mindsets right now sumesh is an executive and philip is a senior both of them established business relationship because they had a common interest in charity do you establish such business relationship with your boss or anybody what do you think about this now suppose you were doing you were asked to do a visioning exercise how do you do it start from today or start from the future backwards now somewhere i i i have done this both ways and i found that i was uh, i was not reaching to the goal i was not able to uh, reach from backwards and i was uh, actually i was um, not uh, having that courage to start from backwards uh, from today onwards also it was not happening what, what is happening here for me it is a version thing i have to somewhere i have to uh, do more in my version um, to to jump up my version to achieve that goal that i have what is in your case so these are the four ways of thinking so um, what we have learned is we learned how to specify our strength and along with that strength we just need to go on having 
creating more and more success stories and that is how we become asset to a company to our organization and not stop anywhere uh, we keep on learning and keep on uh, contributing now here is the curriculum about um uh, about the leadership growth i call it as a leadership growth blueprint uh, you you find out be the person you are meant to be being a person of solution be your future being persistence and influence and live on the edge all the time transitioning your own self version up version jump day one in the curriculum is why resourceful influencing is necessary for you core value standing out in a crowd goal setting stories of resourceful influencing on usual leadership type because your type is very different we have this triplet kind of situations wherein we will discuss about how to take baby steps and in depth system to draft an identity upgrade where we are our strength areas our niches our uh, usp so these are the exercises mm, keep educating yourself thrive reinvent yourself stay relevant then um, uh, know your truth humble on your own stand your ground then sacrifice uh, laser sleep stability comfort so in triplets we will discover more about ourselves this will be on day 1 day 2 will be four skills to be successful recognizing belief and behavior patterns core values for 90 days base quality towards resourcefulness trust building and team acceptance and uh, uh, in triplets again we will uh, examine how to grow bloom become believe so these are very interesting examples that we will be dealing with then uh, day 3 will be journey towards a desired goal learning pattern and journaling add value and solve problems contribution as a team member behavior versus growth affirmations and new success and we have influence uh, interprets also foster for formulate forgive this we will deal in the uh, course of the study right then periodically we will uh, do self analysis in the uh, subsequent uh, after these 3 days of uh, main uh, discussion we will do periodical self analysis in 14 cons consecutive um, weeks and um, i have listed down some of the uh, topics which should be relevant for uh, mid career professionals and upcoming team leads we can add to this list so these are the um, discussion this is a goal tracker that i have made for myself we, we will be making for everybody here so these are the uh, broad top lines then i have five bonuses uh, the internal patterns thoughts beliefs and behaviors mindset and workplace change in the 90 day goals once we achieve or don't achieve uh, our goal in 90 days how to change the 90 days pattern and go ahead with that so along with this also we will do periodical self analysis then mindfulness pause as a re reaction silence as a reaction being in gratitude plan a b c ambiguity along with this also we will have a periodical self analysis then the third one is process versus result tracking along race system inherent attitude elevate standards mindset reset facing criticism core intentions periodical self analysis again the <clears throat> fourth one is delegate appropriate how to delegate appropriately to the teammates 
uh, whom uh, uh, whom we also leverage and uh, talent nurturing mapping of hr role assignment progress tracking acknowledge contribution these are the main topics we will be dealing with delegate appropriate and there is a periodical self analysis along with this also then the fifth and final bonus is joypreneurship it is when you uh, transition from uh, every uh, your maximum to even max more maximum another stage where this is a learning pattern creative diversion investing in a new skill monetizing the skill social cause in a bit the world so in india we call it the entire entire population entire globe is our uh, our own area so that is what you become a global citizen a periodical self analysis along with this also now have you found a reason to be associated with me mm, uh, with this uh, with the leadership growth uh, blueprint influence with resourcefulness this is this will be the result and uh, with the bonuses in, with internal patterns we'll have reinforcement of positive thoughts delegate appropriate process versus result is uh, uniqueness and potential mindfulness is dream influence joy prenership will have this live on the age grow beyond now and the entire package is of 59994 uh, but for this webinar price there is a special price now what will be the result what is the ultimate result the daily success stories <clears throat> you can have after this course you will have a worry free life and career victories now after result after first week we'll have we'll find our niche area uh, in the second week we'll have a mindset document third week we'll have winning trust of seniors fourth week trust of peers fifth week goal setting sixth week uh, we will put a <clears throat> time frame to the dream tracker seventh and eighth week will turn a negative story to positive one ninth week will have um, shifting paradigm in attitude and perception tenth week will have reinforcement of positive thoughts shifting paradigm of habit and action result will be uh, in 11th 11th week creating a success blueprint that is a road map 12th week confidence installation 13th week mindfulness how to uh, cultivate it and 14th week will be transitioning to an enterprise associate passion and emotion with work this is one result uh, that uh, that is there and uh, again the webinar price is just 4999 if you take it here right now this is the this is the link you can use and pay and come into my community and uh, we can <clears throat> uh, discuss and have results every week so if you find this to be useful then you can be associated with me and there are many more free resources with which we can uh, start growing and uh, achieve our results desired results and make a significant change in the globe thank you so much